Deanna, good morning. Good morning, Heather, and it's so great to chat with you again. Uh, it sure was a different kind of show. Look, I was among the journalists who were supposed to go to Saskatoon on that fated weekend on March 15th when everything kind of locked down. And I know that uh, these artists uh, who were nominated were really looking forward to it. So I think everybody, including the organizers, admitted that this was not the same kind of show, but that it was an honor nonetheless. These awards were voted on by a body of their peers, music industry professionals, journalists, and of course some of them were based on sales and streaming as well. So it does speak to the, uh, I guess, the quality of their artistic output. So let's walk through the big winners first. Uh, Alessia Cara, who were supposed to be hosting that uh, ceremony back in March, came into the awards as the highest nominee, and not surprisingly, she walked away with the highest number of trophies three awards. Uh, so she won uh, the Songwriter of the Year, which I have a feeling will mean, uh, will have special meaning to her because she's really uh, starting to really single herself out from the, her other pop peers as a very strong songwriter. And uh, and actually, I think that something about this album, The Pains of Growing, uh, really, uh, it encapsulated partially the time we're in right now uh, because it, it speaks to the difficulties of coming of age and I think it speaks to some of the issues that teens and young adults have been going through, especially in the last three, four months. So I think it's kind of uh, very topical and, and in some ways ahead of its time, a bit of a soundtrack to the times. Uh, speaking of her more good time pop peers, uh, Shawn Mendes walked away with uh, two trophies, including the prestigious Artist of the Year, which sort of everybody wants and then also the uh, pop single of the year for his duet with his romantic partner Camila Cabello the sultry senorita which we're looking at right now I think uh, everybody kind of loves this um, then uh, Tory Lanez the rapper from Brampton Ontario uh, also came into the award show with some of the highest number of nominees he walked away with two trophies including one for the best rap recording and one for the best he took part, actually, in the uh, best R&B soul recording, which was his duet with Jesse Reyes. And Lennon Stella uh, of Lennon and Maisie fame, she's all grown up now. Uh, she's becoming a big star in Nashville, and she won the Breakthrough Artist of the Year. This is kind of a pop country, very sultry album, and I think really shows her growth as an artist. So not surprising that uh, that she won this award, but I think it's, it's a really big deal for her. Heather. Great to see all of this, Deanna, even though it's not, as we've said, you know, what the usual Juno Awards night looks like. But what did you think of the show and how they handled it when it had to move online? Well, you know, it was a different kind of show. I think uh, Alan Reed, the head of Junos, and all the organizers freely admit that so much of the Junos in the Juno week is in, obviously, the audience participation. It was going to be taking place at the Sastel Center in Saskatchewan. That's a 15,000 capacity. But also in the artists just hanging out with each other, trading ideas, and certainly for me, covering the Junos, that was one of the highlights. So you can't replicate that. But I think they did a good job in uh, making sure that they walk through all the awards. Normally awards are given on two nights. Uh, this time around they were all jammed into one online special so 42 awards were given and I think a cool part of that is that if you want something like the best children's album of the year, best instrumental, classical, uh, categories that tend to be a little bit neglected in the traditional big broadcast show. Now they were kind of on par and shoulder to shoulder with the bigger awards like Best Pop Recording or Artist of the Year. I think that was great. Uh, I've seen in other interviews that uh, Alan Reed had said that they decided not to do the special honorary awards like the award that was going to be uh, given to Jen Arden. She was going to be inducted into the uh, Canadian Music Hall of Fame. He said this is a once in a lifetime honor and he felt that it was very important uh, to be uh, given to her when she is with her peers because it is such a huge honor. So presumably they're waiting uh, for uh, some later point or perhaps next year's Junos to actually present this uh, to her. And there were performances which I thought were really cool and I think that what we've seen last night is that uh, performances have moved on from those first few days of sort of uh, benefits and you know charity shows where you really saw people like in uh, their bedroom strumming. You showed that 
that clip of Isque Heather, and you saw that you know she came up with this beautiful creative arrangement of, of doing it in a natural setting. And I think that last night's performances actually looked and sounded really cool while still respecting uh, the ideas of uh, social distancing and safety. I want to throw to a little clip of Neon Dreams from Halifax. They won Breakthrough Group of the Year. Here's a little bit of Neon Dreams. Even if we're so far away. But you know that don't change a thing Cause you still be everything so there you go, Heather. Uh, I think that they did the best they could under the circumstances. I mean, these artists still get the honor uh, of that their work was so highly valued. I think uh, it's no exaggeration to say that, of course, what all these artists miss most. I was just working on a story that aired last night on The National, but the artists miss most is interaction with their fans. And, of course, that is going to be some while away. Uh, concerts are notoriously difficult to uh, maintain social distancing at. So I think that, uh, you know, this honor probably was a little bit of a jolt of happiness for what has been a very rough time for the music industry. And I think everybody's waiting to see what the Junos and Karas, the organization that gives them out, is going to do about next year. The Junos were supposed to be taking place in Toronto in March of 2021. Whether that will take place as planned, whether they're going to have to change plans, we're waiting to see. Heather. Deanna, thank you very much.